talk about a piece of garage. Well, it's time to install our intake manifold. And this is a dual plane Edelbrock Performer EPS manifold. Uh, now, before I put this on, before I put on almost every manifold, I powder coat it. And there's a couple things you can do. Um, the reason I powder coat it is to make it easy to clean. If you've ever used a raw aluminum intake, you know that if you get oil on it or grease on it, it's impossible to clean or it's impossible to keep it looking clean. So I powder coat it. This is powder coated with Eastwood's powder. It's called OEM Wheel Sparkle Silver or something. I'll put the number up here so you know what number it is. And it looks really close to aluminum. I mean, if you look, look at this, it, uh, it looks like just a cast aluminum manifold. So the powder matches pretty good. The other thing you could do is if you want to, you can just, you could bead blast it, wash it down and put a clear on it. Uh, but if you clear, put a clear over aluminum, it tends to turn a little white, which is why I don't like to do that which is why I use this color. Now I don't put it on really thick. I mist it on here just to get a nice even coat. It seals the pores and it makes the surface real easy to clean. Let's fit it on top of the engine block. We can get a look at the powder coating and we can see how it fits. Now I'll just sit this in place here and I'll line up, line up my bolt holes in front and back. Take a quick look down and make sure that they're matching in there. And This is kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for my clearance in the front and the back. And, it, and it's really pretty close. Um, I mean, it's pretty tight in there right now. So when I put a gasket on there, we'll see how it raises up. So what I'll do is first I'll put in, I'll put on the uh, intake gaskets. Now, when you put in your intake gaskets, take a look. Uh, you want to make sure, just like the head gaskets, this one is actually marked this side up. It says this side up on this one. And if I look at both of them, put them both this side up. And I hold them together. They are exactly symmetrical, so one side doesn't matter over the other. So I'm just going to set these in place real quick, like that. And I want to sit my intake manifold and I'll see how that fits now. Let's see what it looks like on the bottom. Okay, bolt holes lined up. Fits pretty good. It's it's not rocking back and forth so it's not warped and the gap on the back and the front looks like it's about an eighth of an inch so I'm going to lift this back off and I'm going to put on the end gaskets and the end gaskets that come with the, the set uh, look like they're about the right thickness the nice thing I like about this is they got these little nubs on the bottom and they line up with the nubs in the hole on the block. So I'm going to take these gaskets and them aside for a second and I'll put these in and those nubs kind of hold it in place. I'll do it both on the front and back like that. Now these gaskets on the front and the back, you can see I'll lift one of these up. I know it's really close. You can see there's a, a gap there. That's for, the, uh, that's for the gasket to sit, the side gasket to sit in there. So you put this here, put those on and the side gasket has this tab right here which fits in that slot and when you sit those in there in the front and back it lifts it up and it puts it, the bolt holes right at the perfect height so let's, let's test fit this test fit that and well now we'll sit the manifold in again let's see how it fits Okay, the bolt holes still line up nice and straight does it wobble? And you know that that fits really well. It fits really well with the standard gaskets. So I think instead of putting a bead of, of a sealer in the front and back like you usually do, you could take your caulk and put a big bead on the front and back. I'm going to use the gaskets that came with it. They fit nice. So let me take this off and we'll put the gaskets on. Before I put any sealer on there, just want to wipe this down. Uh, after you run the oil pump, sometimes oil splashes up there on the cylinder head or on the china wall on both the front and back. If you have any oil on there, make sure you clean that off. Also, you want to make sure that the gas is going to seal in the corner between the cylinder head and the block. So that's where I want to put just a little bit more. I'm just going to run a small bead just around the center here to make sure I get a seal. And again in the corner. I'll do the front and back the same way.
I still have my my oil gauge hooked up here, my oil pressure gauge. And as you can see, I got an even coating of oil throughout the entire oil, the uh, lifter valley here. A lot of oil. I ran the oil pump for a couple minutes to make sure I had plenty of oil throughout the entire engine. If your engine has been sitting a while, which meaning you've put it together and it's been sitting, this is your last chance to put down your uh, your tool, the tool in there for the oil pump. Run your oil pump to make sure that you have uh, good oil throughout the entire engine. It's a good time to do that. So I'm just going to sit these in here, front and back. And you don't need a whole ton in here, just to make sure I have the corners. I'm going to seal the corners again for the gasket. And I'll just run a real small bead around the top and bottom. You don't want to put a ton in there. Again, you're not trying to glue these things together. You're just trying to create a seal. This is under a slight vacuum. So if anything, you're going to pull air in. There should be no pressure. Get the corners in here. That's where the gases are going to come together. And I'll just go around the water jackets here. And just a little bit around the intake openings. Just a little bit. You don't need a lot. Now just repeat, make sure we got this this side up, goes the correct way, align the tabs with the gasket, set it in place, aligning the bolt holes and the ports in the head. Uh, this side up goes this way. Alright, just like the, um, the head bolts, the bolts in the middle here, these are through holes that go into the center for the valley pan. So you can put a little sealer in there just to make sure the bolts seal, you don't get any oil to come through. And now I can just set the manifold in place. You have to be a little more careful when you have the, the sealer on there so you don't move anything around. And just set it down straight. Alright, now I can put my bolts in. I'm using some nice 12 point chrome bolts here for my intake manifold. Now until I run this on the dyno I'm not going to have all these brackets. There's all kinds of brackets that go on here for the lift bracket and there's brackets over here for the wires for the uh, wiring harness. But I'm not going to put those on right now. I'm just going to put the bolts in, run it down and I want to get it running and then after that I can put these brackets on. Now you just follow the torque sequence and three equal stages up to 25 foot-pounds. Follow the crisscross pattern. Final down to 25 foot-pounds.
Uh, a lot of people have asked about using an extension for torquing. And I think I mentioned this before. When you're going to a low torque, like 25 foot-pounds like this, you're not really going to twist or rotate a steel shaft like that. It takes a lot to twist something like this, so you're not really going to screw up your torque a lot. But you want, ideally, ideally I should have the, the socket as close to the torque wrench as possible. So yes, you should have it as short as possible. But just to show you, I'll retorque this, even though I torqued it with the extension. And, it, and it, it, it moved a little bit, but it's not going to move a lot. But I got to go through it one last time. 25 foot pounds and we're all done. And when you finish, I like to go around, clean up, just to make sure I don't have any RTV or any gasket material. See right here in the front? Gasket squished out. Now I got to take all these back off, take a look and see what happened there. It might be too small. I might just have to run a bead of uh, sealer in there and go without that gasket. See why that's squished out. As soon as I loosen it up, you can see it went back in. So that gasket is too thick. So let me pull this back off. And now I will have to start from scratch. Got to clean it all off, take this off, clean it, and reinstall. Now if that happens to you, don't get all worked up about it. Just take everything apart, clean it off nice and neat, realign it, and go with the bead instead of the gasket. When you do this, you always run the risk of putting too much on, and then you can clean up the outside, but you can't necessarily clean up the inside. So you just want to put just about enough on there, that the thickness of the gasket that was on there, which was about an eighth of an inch. Just got to make sure you get in the corners, and then we'll set it on. You don't get worked up, you just fix it, and keep moving. Okay, we'll set this one in place. Again, lining up the, the holes. Now the difference is I have the intake, uh, the gasket on the heads first. And now I will start to push down and I will look on each end to make sure I have enough on each end. Now I can put my bolts in, remembering to put the sealant on the inner bolts to make sure you don't get an oil leak. Here's where it's a little different for cast iron heads it's 30 foot pounds and for aluminum heads, it's only 25. And I can finish this up for the second time. And there we go. So now our question is, why did that gasket squish out of the front? The one probably would have squished out of the back too. Now some people would say, well if you didn't put any sealer on there, it wouldn't have been slippery and it wouldn't have smushed out. Maybe. Maybe if you let it dry, it would have stayed in place. Maybe. But the fact of the matter is, if that gasket, that rubber gasket is over compressed and the engine heats up, it's going to squish out anyway over time, whether you have sealer on there or not. But this is what actually happened. If you look at the engine block, cylinder heads and the intake manifold, when I had, if, if, if I drew a, a line right here so we know that this, where that gasket sat was this, this long right here. What I did was, when I had the block machine, you have the heads taken down. So now you have your heads taken down a certain amount. And I'll, over, I'll exaggerate a little bit just so you can see. So now, instead of that front being this long, it's, I'll do it in right here. Now, it's this long. So it's shorter. And since it's shorter, like that, the, the, the manifold's going to get pulled closer because now the heads are sitting closer. The heads will be going this direction. The heads will be closer like that. And the bolt holes for the manifold will be lower. So it's going to pull the manifold down lower so I have less gap between the manifold and the china wall on the front and back for that gasket to fit. That's probably why it squished out. Uh, it would happen in the front and the back, but it's a good thing it happened now because if it didn't happen now, it would have happened eventually. So sometimes things don't go exactly as planned, but it's good to have it happen while you're doing it before we put the engine in and I'll run into a problem later on. Luckily we got that fixed and I'm confident we're all sealed up and ready to go. We're all done with the intake manifold and uh, now we can work on our Holly Sniper EFI system. Thanks for stopping by PC Garage.